It's well known that the continuation and ending of the mystery of Edwin Drood remain unknown, as the novel was unfinished at the time of the author's death in June 1870. But what I want to deal with is another biblio mystery concerning the later fate of this novel and its publication in the author's collected works. Naturally, this didn't occur during Dickens's lifetime, as the serialisation of the six parts that were completed ran until September 1870, and his publishers, Chapman and Hall, were faced with the issue of when and how to incorporate the latest writings of their late star author into the collected editions that still remained open-ended, these being the Illustrated Library Edition, initiated in 1861, and the Charles Dickens edition, which they began publishing with great success in 1867. Sticking with the Charles Dickens edition, sometimes referred to as the signature or autograph edition, due to the facsimile signature on the front cover, I'd like to take you behind the scenes, so to speak, and show you what the work of a serious bibliographer involves, as I try to determine how, why and when Edwin Drood was added to Dickens's collected works. You'd think, as I did initially, that such a basic question had been resolved way back in the 19th century and that there was nothing for a 21st century bibliographer to add. Think again. The first book-length bibliography of Dickens was published in 1879 and was the work of one James Cook. According to Cook, None of the 21 volumes in the Charles Dickens edition was dated, but he states that Edwin Drood and other stories appeared as the second to last volume in the series in 1871. Having already acquired most of the first printings of volumes in the Charles Dickens edition prior to working on Edwin Drood, I was in a position to dismiss some of what Cook has to say, as all of the volumes published down to 1870 were dated showing that his bibliography was not to be relied on as accurate. The next major bibliography by R. H. Shepherd appeared just a year later, but that neglected to mention any printings of Edwin Drood other than the first edition of 1870. John Forster, in the bibliography appended to his Life of Dickens, was able to state in 1874 that the Charles Dickens edition ended with the Child's History of England in 1870, and makes no reference to Edwin Drood having appeared in that series. But then, in an 1887 bibliography, John Anderson of the British Library claimed that the series was completed in 1873. Moving much closer to the present, the latest edition of the Cambridge Bibliography of English Literature, a work of scholarship on which one ought to be able to rely, informs us that Edwin Drood and other stories appeared in the Charles Dickens edition dated 1875, and it was printed from the 1873 edition, that being the previous edition mentioned in the entry, which CBEL refers to as the library edition. Are you following so far? Well, let me give you a taste of what is to come by letting you know that the one fact that CBEL got right is that there was such a volume in the Charles Dickens edition. However, it was not dated 1875, it was not printed from the 1873 edition, which anyway isn't dated 1873 but 1874, and shouldn't be referred to as the library edition, which was issued in 1858 to 1859, but as the first illustrated library edition. Phew! Now the work of the present bibliographer can begin. I started looking for any copies of Edwin Drood and other stories published by Chapman and Hall and dated anywhere between 1871 and 1875. For sale online, in booksellers' catalogues, in major Dickens collections and in library holdings around the world. Guess what? Not a single copy came to light in any edition or format. So I then turned my attention to undated copies of the Charles Dickens edition to see what light they might throw on the matter. What I'm about to show you is the product of countless online searches and purchases made over roughly three years in order to write the final entry of 116 in my new bibliography, The Collected Dickens. 
OK, here are seven copies of Edwin Drood and Other Stories, all published in the Charles Dickens edition, and all different, to greater or lesser degree, one from the other, just on the basis of the spines alone. First there's the colour, red, blue or brown. Then the decoration, with or without a black frieze. Then the height and shade of particular volumes. And even the title itself, one volume being lettered The Mystery of Edwin Drood, whereas all the others simply state Edwin Drood. The covers reveal yet more differences. They all bear the author's facsimile signature, but some say THE Charles Dickens edition, whereas others only feature the name itself. And then there's the matter of how many gilt squiggles appear below the author's name. Three, five or seven. Oh, and some copies have beveled edges to the boards, while others don't. And we haven't even opened the books yet. Who'd want to be a bibliographer? Before I go any further though, you can get involved here. Which one, or ones, out of these seven do you think turned out on closer examination and with further research to be first editions of this format? That is, in the Charles Dickens edition. It's not a trick question. I'll give you a clue. The answer is more than zero, but not all seven. Hmm. I'm going to turn now to another highly respected and usually very reliable source of information, Bob Patton's Charles Dickens and his publishers. He has this to say about volumes in the Charles Dickens edition. Each novel came out complete in a single volume, crown octavo, bound in red cloth-covered boards with a black design on the cover incorporating the intertwined initials CD in an upper roundel and C and H in a lower one and with Dickens' signature stamped in gold to signify his present watchfulness over his own edition. On that basis, we ought to be able to narrow things down considerably, as only two of the volumes conform to that description. And peeking inside, we can rule out one of them, as although it's not dated on the title page, if we turn to the title verso, we find the statement that it was reprinted from stereotype plates in April 1887. So, is this the resolution to our mystery? Afraid not, as that would be far too easy. If we look inside the remaining copy, we can see that it was printed by William Clowes and Sons Limited of London and Beckles, a major printer and a pioneer in the use of the steam press. I have no problem with all that, except for the fact that all the preceding 20 titles in the series were first printed by Virtue and Company. And then there's the troublesome fact that all the 20 preceding titles did not appear in the binding described by Patton, but in this plain red binding without the design and lettering in black. Indeed, not a single one of the hundred copies of that particular design and cloth colour that I've ever inspected or owned is dated on the title page, and the binding does not appear to have been in use before 1876 at the very earliest. In short, this copy, bound in red, stamped in black and printed by Clowes, now has a big question mark against it. Turning to the other five copies, if we inspect them internally, they show a remarkable consistency. They all designate the publishers as Chapman and Hall of 193 Piccadilly. Why is that significant? Because in 1880 Chapman and Hall became a limited company and in the same year changed address, moving to Henrietta Street, and these facts are reflected in changes to their title pages. So, all these copies were printed before 1880. And who were the printers? Virtue and Company, City Road, London. Now this is where things start to get exciting, at least from a bibliographical perspective. Trawling through the online archive of The Spectator, a weekly journal which at that time listed all new book publications, I discovered that the Charles Dickens edition of Edwin Drood and Other Stories was recorded as first published on February the 27th, 1875. At last, a date of publication. Even more interesting is the fact that Virtue and Company became a limited company in early March 1875. So, 
all five copies in this miscellany of bindings were printed by Virtue and Company in February 1875 and, wait for it, are all first editions. Right then, these two are reprints and these five are all first editions in this format. Did any of you guess right? I certainly wouldn't have done myself until I discovered the solution. The question now is, why on earth did the publishers choose to issue this book simultaneously in such a proliferation of different binding styles? Well, let's not forget that this collection of shorter late works was intended as the final volume in Dickens's collected writings, concluding a series that had been started eight years earlier in 1867. The first and most popular binding style used by the publishers was this red Morocco grained cloth. Collectors of this style would certainly have wanted to purchase a matching copy. But then Chapman and Hall introduced a so-called library style binding in 1869 with smooth cloth and beveled edges to the boards. The most common colour used was red, but the binders also produced copies in green and blue. In fact, even though I've never seen such a copy, I fully expect that there are first edition copies of Edwin Drood and other stories in smooth green cloth like this as well. If you have one of these, or indeed any other variant, please let me know. And then there's this copy in brown cloth, but with the design in black as described by Patton. In order to celebrate the conclusion of the series, the publishers commissioned an entirely new binding design and reissued all the earlier titles in the Charles Dickens edition and this brand new volume in brown cloth with a black frieze. The design was retained, but the colour was changed to red in 1876 and it remained available in this binding style right down until 1912. Finally, there's this anomaly. Why does one copy in the red Morocco grain cloth give the title as The Mystery of Edwin Drood and the other as plain Edwin Drood? My explanation for this curiosity is that the first version was deemed too long and cluttered up the spine. Indeed, the long title may even have been a trial binding as this is the only such copy that I've ever come across, making it a particular rarity. So, there you have it. The Mystery of Edwin Drood and other stories, about which more another time, first appeared in the Charles Dickens edition, not in 1871, but undated in February 1875 and was printed by Virtue and Company, not yet limited. Whatever possessed me to become a bibliographer? If you enjoy the thrill of discovery, you'll know the answer. If this wasn't your cup of tea, I'll try to make the next video more fun. Thank you and good night. Rivon, down through time and space, down through the corridors. Rivon words on printed page.